Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am going to be showing you guys how to do this set of press-on nails right here. Um, I had barely started doing press-on nails, so I am fairly new to this, but I feel like I've gotten the hang of it pretty quickly. There are some things that, of course, I would do differently, um, but yes, yeah, stay tuned and see what mistakes that I did that maybe I would want to do different and see things that it could make it easier for you. So if you guys haven't already, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. And as usual, I will go ahead and get started. I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a press on nail set. Um, I had just started to do these, so I'm also getting the hang of these as well. So I had kind of figured out a way that works for me the best, just because before I was using this little thing that I had got off of Amazon, please excuse all the paints. I, um, I'll dab all my paints on there and I keep everything inside. So this is the little, it's a mounting tape, but it still stays like sticky. So with that, what I use that for is for these little things, you just stick it on there and it's basically a reusable sticky, uh, kind of like a sticky tab, but you're able to put your nails on there. And then even when you want to take them off, you're able to take them off. So, but it stays on there pretty good. Even from the side, you could shake it upside down. And then with this kit, it always or it also comes with this little thing, which it does make it a little bit easier to hold. But the only thing that I find with this is that it still moves around a little bit. Um, but it works for me just because the way I hold it is I'll put my thumb on top. So and then I'll put a finger in the back. So it basically helps um, not move it as much. And it kind of gives you like a better grip. And so that's what I like about this. And I like that all the backs of these are magnetic. So another thing that I'll do is I'll get the bottom of my LED lamp, which is this thing right here. This, I it goes to the bottom of my LED lamp, but what I'll do is stick all of them on here. So once it does come time to cure them, I am able just to put them in the lamp and I don't have to worry about them moving all over the place. So that's kind of another option. Or you could also get another metal plate. Uh, a way that I have found that is pretty easy to do is get one of these nail swatches. I have a whole bunch of them where I have all of my stuff that I offer to my clients on there. So what we're going to do first is get this sticky tape. I will have it linked down below. Um... So I'll just put it under like sticky tape or something like that. So what I like to do is kind of put each hand on each side of this. And you want to make sure that the it's not sticking out underneath this. Because if it is, then when you go and do your... Um, when you go and do your gel top coats and stuff, it'll kind of stick to there and you just have more work to clean up. So... I try to have less work instead of more work. So, and then I like to put it in the order where I know the set's going to be placed. So with this one, this is the pinky nail. So I like to put them on each side. So then even when I put them in the lamp, just because my other lamp that I use is a UV lamp, but I only use it for um, a certain gel matte top coat, just because I feel like in my LED lamp that that top coat, for whatever reason, it never, ever cures. So, um, I, using that plate, it's the one that I use for the LED lamp, the one that I'll stick everything to that one. It's good for that. But a lot of times when I am doing the matte nails, that's what kind of makes it a little bit more difficult because, because when I do that one, it kind of tends to, um, like, or the plate is just too just too big for the for that machine so it's hard to fit it in there and then I have to take them all off put them back on and so it kind of just ends up taking a lot more time doing it that way versus the way that I'm going to show you 
this stuff it does seem like it's stiff like the way I had to pull it apart when you first get it I mean this stuff it's been probably in this container for over a year so it doesn't dry out very fast which is nice because you could like keep on using it reapplying and then once it starts to get ugly and stuff um you could just throw it away mine that I do have on the the little stands these are starting to get ugly so it's about time to get rid of those the only thing that I feel like with doing it on here is that you have to be very careful when you're taking it off just because these are so fragile you don't want to end up uh you don't want to end up ripping off the actual tab if you have somebody that has bigger fingernails i would suggest doing every other every other tip on here just because then if the tips are too big and they keep touching each other especially while you're painting it will just make a mess so with these thumbnails, since they are way too big, uh, what I'm going to do is wipe them down and then and I'm going to put them like a little bit further than these ones. Because see, if you I were to put them right next to it, I could get away with it, but it ends up touching it ends up touching it too close. And I don't want that to happen. So I just rather have it a little bit away. Okay, so the nail tips that I am using on here, they're from EC Basket, and it's by Nails Gaga, and um, and these are just meant for the the tips. I think it comes with 500 tips in there. Um, I also got coffin shaped ones. These ones just are like the almond stiletto ones. I do feel like they're more almond than stilettos. I File them to make them into a point a little bit more just because they are rounded. I'll show you one that it isn't um, filed or anything done to it. And you can kind of see how much more round this one is versus the ones on the swatch. So it is kind of a difference, but I mean, the good thing about that is just like custom making them. I feel like you're able to since you can do custom orders with these it's better just to kind of like do your own take on it and do things that you like to it just because not everybody likes the same shape which is understandable okay so another thing that i'm going to be doing is if some of them need to like be touched up at the ends or they have like this little furry stuff at the ends i just like to go back and kind of just buff it off if I can. And the reason why I do that is because once you paint, if that's not all off, then it just kind of makes a mess of things. And it just, the paint doesn't go on smooth and it doesn't look very nice. Okay, so there are ways to make the nail tips a little bit stronger. You could also put acrylic on there, but when you are doing the acrylic on there, it will shrink the nails just a little bit. So you be, and they the reason why I say they shrink them a little bit is just because it kind of makes them seem like a little bit smaller and tighter, which you have to be careful with that. Okay, so a set that I've been really wanting to do is an all glitter set. So that's what I'm going to show you guys just so I could kind of make it quick. And then I'll show you one tip and basically everything else from here is going to be the same. Okay, so this is the glitter that I'm using. It is from Montage Nails. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that back in here. And the way I like to do this is putting it in, um, or like sprinkling on the glitter. So I'm just going to get this fan brush right here, and that will kind of help me do that. Um, for her glitters, she doesn't have names on them so it's just kind of you pick them off of the color so that's kind of one downfall i know she had gotten her site up and running but i just haven't been able to get on there yet and see exactly if they are numbered on there or if she just kind of has a description of what they look like i think for one of these nails i think i'm gonna do a solid color so let's move this one away and I'll put this one over here. Just 
it's smart to do this because if you are doing an actual glitter, you don't want to put all the glitter ones next to one another. But I like to leave that space so I know that that one is the ring finger. And with this part, since... Because a lot of people, they like to rough up the nail before they do any type of gel on it. I only like to do that when it's a gel polish just because I don't feel like they adhere. But this, with this uh, top coat, it adheres really well to stuff that isn't buffed out or anything like that. So it's nice because you don't have to worry about it. Um, the top coat that I am using is the Ultimate Finish Gel Top Coat. And you guys will see this one a lot on my channel. Unless I decide to switch up and find something better than this one, then of course you guys will see another one on there. But honestly, I am very happy with the Ultimate Finish Gel Top Coat from Young Nails. That honestly, I have no reason to switch up the top coat that I am using. And I like to always just go back and check everything. Okay, so now I'm going to get this glitter. And I like to keep the container of the glitter underneath it um sometimes with the tape underneath if you guys dip the glitter or dip the nail into the glitter then that's when I noticed that it the tape will kind of get like ruined faster so you won't be able you would only be able to kind of use it for this one set but if you're doing it like the way I'm doing it that usually the tape it stays pretty good for a while these fan brushes are perfect when applying the glitter though too just because it allows it to hold a lot of glitter at once and you're able just to pour on. So that's why I like using the glitter or the, the fan brush for the glitter. Okay, so that's what that looks like. It looks so pretty. I'm going to go ahead and go back and put some on the side. You guys always want to make sure and go back. Double check everything just because it's easier to do it this way than having to put a top coat over it and go over it all over again. Just because that takes more time than just checking your work. So always just make sure to check your work. Okay, so with this, I am going to just go ahead and bring my light if I can. So I have the artistic nail art lamp. And then as you can see is you could just put it in here. With actual hands, it has a sensor on there. So that's kind of nice just because with the sensor, you are able to like just have your client pop their hand in there and it'll automatically turn on. With stuff like this, you will end up having to automatically turn it on. And it's nice because it also has a little timer up at the top showing how many seconds you have. And it also has um, the 30 seconds, 20 seconds, and 5 seconds for flash cure. Or you could have it on continuously if you want. But... This lamp is very sensitive when it comes to being on for too long and I've had it break on me once and I had to get a new lamp. So, and I don't know, it, it honestly, anytime you have to get things fixed, it isn't a good time. So that's one thing. Okay, and then with this nail, what I am going to be doing is because it is going to have a gel top coat on it. I am going to go ahead and buff these. And the buffer that I am using is 100 to 180. So, and you just want to take off the shine of that. Okay, so the one that I'm going to be using is in between these two right here. I've been really liking this one. This one's kind of fun to do. This one, the bottle looks nothing like the color. I kind of expected more of a gray color. 
Um, and this one's Engagement to Be. But this one's a really pretty color. I've used it on some of my other sets. And then there's also this one that I was thinking about using. But I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you guys think these go with the color? I kind of think I might change my mind and go ahead and do a white, actually. This is the Alpine Snow from OPI. Please excuse the bottle. It is very used and abused. So uh, that's something that definitely needs to be cleaned up and taken care of. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and put this in the light for another 30 seconds. The nice thing about working with gel when doing these sets is that you don't ever have to worry about it. You don't ever have to worry about it being um, or taking too long when you want it to dry and stuff. So. If there is anything in the gel, always make sure that you clean it up before you cure it. You don't want to end up going back and wishing you would have done it and you didn't. So, another top coat. I do want to try another top coat. So, I know I just got done saying about how much I love the Ultimate Finish Young Nail Gel Top Coat. But, um, Mia Secret... They had this one when I had went to the nail store, so I did want to go and see if this one would be better. Just because the only thing with the Ultimate Finish Gel Top Coat, I do notice that there is a yellow tone. It's not right when you put it on the nail, it's after you cure it. So it has something to do with something going on inside of the gel, so that's kind of something that... I do want to let you guys know is that I do notice with that one it does have a little bit of discoloration. So the Mia Secret Ultimate Finish or the oh it's the Mia Secret UV Finish Gel Ultra Shine. And with this one it does not say how long you cure it for. Um so I guess we'll just go ahead and um, kind of guess. I'll end up putting it in for 60 seconds. Usually top coats are good with the with just 30, but I'll do 60 just to be safe. And it doesn't say if it has a dispersion layer. So I don't know if I'm going to have to wipe it down or not. I do like top coats that they are no wipe top coats. So we'll see. So far, the consistency of it, it is very thin, um, which I do like that just because of the, the Ultimate Finish Gel from Young Nails, that is a little bit thicker. But let's go ahead and apply this and see. So far, I like the brush. I feel like the brush is very nice. We're going to go ahead and let this cure for 60 seconds. All right, you guys, this is the finished look. So with this top coat, I did notice that you did have to do it for the 60 seconds. You couldn't do the 30. Um, and it does not have a dispersion layer. So the things that I would do different on these nails, I would take in the sides a lot more than what they are just because the look that I like to go for is a very stiletto pointy I don't like it to be round I just like the point so I would go back and definitely do the taking in the sides a lot more I haven't tried the coffin style on myself yet for the press on tips yet so I'll go ahead and get a video of those up for you guys also just because I know everybody was asking about those so if you guys like this video, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. If you guys do press on nails, please leave some tips and tricks down below. I would love to see what you guys do. So as always, I'll be back with more videos. Bye!